Hello, and welcome to another episode. In this one, we're going to be talking about a topic in web security, uh, which is what is CSRF? And uh, you might also hear this referred to as XSRF, and they both stand for cross-site request forgery. And I'm going to show you a quick example of that using Flask, which is a web framework for Python. Uh, and then we'll talk about ways that you can prevent this type of attack on uh, websites. And let's jump into that. Okay, so we're just going to start with like very, <laughs> very nothing today. Uh, so I'm going to build a full uh, web app from scratch. And we're going to do that by making a virtual env and installing Flask. And we'll open up a little app.py file and set up a Flask app. And the way we're going to do that is with flask.flask, .flask, double under name. And we're going to set up a couple of routes. One of these routes is going to be a post endpoint. Now, when we're talking about cross-site request forgery, we're really only concerned about endpoints which have side effects. Uh, now, usually, by convention, your routes that will have side effects will be either post or put or you know other, other similar verbs in HTTP if you're following the you know, a RESTful approach. Um, but you could imagine cross-site request, request forgery happening for other endpoints that also perform side effects. So we're really trying to prevent uh, unwanted side effects here. But let's set up a, you know, a route here, which is going to be a post endpoint. And we're going to pretend like this post endpoint does something as a side effect. I, I don't actually have an example that uh, does an actual thing as a side effect, but we're going to, we're going to pretend like, I don't know, this fires missiles or something. Um, the missiles were fired. And so this post endpoint, this target slash target endpoint is going to, you know, fire missiles. And when we post something to it, it will return this as a response. Now, I also want some other page that allows us to, you know, make a form and post to that. We'll just do that on index because it's easy. Return. And I'm just going to do our most basic HTML here. Body form action equals target method equals post and input type equals submit value equals fire the missiles. Something like that. Form body and HTML. So just a, a very basic form here. And we want to make this runnable. Name equals main exit main and if we set up our main here just do app.run and we'll put it on some port oh, 9002 that seems like a good port okay so here's just a very basic flask app and when we go ahead and run this python app or maybe on virtual end, python app.py you'll see and it warns like this is a development server that's fine we're, we're just kind of De demoing this here and when we load up this page you'll see we get this little fire the missiles button and when we press that it will submit the post to slash target and the the target endpoint will say the missiles were fired cool so maybe this is a web app which like i don't know sends an email or you know uploads a file or do does some sort of side effect but here we're just you know saying the missiles were fired and you know this works in your development environment so you ship it to production and suddenly you start getting missiles fired when you don't expect them to be fired and let me show you how somebody might exploit this website to you know fire missiles when it's not actually from your own website so someone else's website is firing your missiles um, and to demo that i'm going to make a little html page that's going to be a kind of our attackers page uh, we'll do index.html, dog type, HTML, HTML. And again, I'm just going to, you know, forgo some of the actual ways that you would write HTML and just kind of throw something in here. So somebody might make their own web page, which submits this form uh, outside of your page and, you know, triggers the side effect without your permission. So let's, uh, you know, set up kind of a fake form that would do that. And here's where they would do their the, the cross-site portion of this. So they're targeting this other URL, but it's not on their website. So if we copy that. Um, they can make a form which posts to your website um, and does whatever they want here. So input type equals submit, value equals fire someone else's missiles. <laughs> Something like this. And you'll see if we open up this page, um, 
you'll see that now, even though I'm not on the 127001-9002 domain, I can still press this button and it will still trigger missiles to be fired. And we can actually go one worse than that. So we can actually auto-submit this form, which makes it even sneakier. So if we put a script here, document, actually I'll give this an ID. Form one, document.get element by ID, form one, dot submit. So we can just auto-submit this form when the page loads. And so now if I refresh this page, even though the user didn't interact with it, just their act of landing on this page will cause the missiles to be fired on this other website. Now we can get even sneakier than this. We can introduce a frame here. Uh, iframe name equals T1. We'll just make that an empty iframe. And what we can do is change this form to do uh, target equals T1. I think this needs to be first, but it doesn't, I don't know that it actually matters here. So we've we've added another attribute to this form here that says, you know, send this post to the T1 target. And now if we run this, if I recall correctly, uh, actually we gotta, because <laughs> it auto submits right now, it's, uh, it's just gonna, oh, you can see here. Um, you can see that this, just by loading this page, it targeted this form inside of a frame. Um, so it didn't even like redirect this page and someone could go even sneakier and put some styling on these. So this form is not visible. So they could do style equals, you know, visibility hidden. Uh, so you can see um, it sent this post into here. We could also make this iframe hidden as well. You know, width equals one, height equals one, style equals visibility hidden. Note I'm using visibility hidden instead of display none because I still want it to be there. But um, And so you can see here, if we look at this endpoint and we refresh this page, uh, actually, <laughs> if, we just, if we just press enter on this page, you can see that it triggers a post to my external server. And so this is kind of like the classical example of cross-site request forgery. And actually, <laughs> I have a kind of funny story about this. Um, when I was working at Yelp, Yelp had this open source project called Yelp Love, uh, Yelp slash love, which they have open sourced. And the basic idea behind Yelp Love is you would send appreciation to your fellow employees. You would you know, fill out a form with their LDAP name and send a little message that says like, oh, thank you for shipping this or, or something like that. <laughs> and uh, I made an internal website, which, you know, basically had a hidden form like this, that when you landed on the page, it would post to Yelp love and send me love. <laughs> and so there was one week where uh, I convinced a lot of people to open this random website and it sent me something like 300 loves or something. And um, I won the most love for the week, but I cheated because I used a, a cross-site cross request forgery. Uh, but Let's talk about how you would fix this. And so the, the key to fixing this is you want to make sure that, um, it's not this. You wanna make sure that when you're receiving a post on this endpoint, you want to know that that post came from your own website. And uh, the general approach that people used to do this is they put a special input inside their form, which identifies where it came from. So they'll have like something like input, type equals hidden and name equals CSRF toke, uh, usually stands for CSRF token. Uh, the idea is to do a token based authentication and they'll specify a value here. Now the value here has to be secret. That is like some other website can't figure out what this value is and you know can't create a little, a little form here that um, would contain the same CSRF token. So it has to be unique. Uh, the value also has to be specific to the individual user that you're sending because, you know, if uh, if somebody realized like, oh, if I load this page, grab the CSRF token and just stick that into my web page, now I can post to it. Uh, so it has to be unique to that user. And there's also some suggestions around making this more secure, like, you know, some websites will have a temporary CSRF token that expires after a certain amount of time. Um, some others will, you know, do validation based on the user session and make sure like when it issued a token to a user, it also matched their login or something like that. Uh, but the general approach that people use is they will set a cookie on the user and they'll also have a secret value on the server and they'll combine that secret value and the cookie and produce a third value that they stick into the form. 
And so uh, when you render the form with this CSRF token, you can then post it, and the post will include the value here. And then in your target form, you'll load that value and compare it against the cookied value and your secret value. And basically, you'll, you'll validate that the request came from the server that you expected it to. Um, and then like a, a nasty third party like this wouldn't be able to replicate that same value because they don't have access to the cookies of your user and they don't have access to the secret value on the server. So they couldn't combine the two values to produce you know, that, that secret CSRF token value. Um, another suggestion, like if you're writing a CSRF token framework is to also use unique endpoints for uh, your unique salts for each of your CSRF tokens such that you have actually three input values. You have the session value, you have the secret key, and you have some unique value for each form. This way, if you know one of the CSRF tokens were somehow broken on your website, uh, you wouldn't be able to reuse that CSRF token to post to another endpoint on the same website. Um, you know, like maybe one of them sends an email, maybe one of them logs out or signs up for premium or something like that. Um, but anyway, this is CSRF and kind of like a, a crash course on how you would fix it. There's several libraries in pretty much every framework that you would use for, for running a website that should solve this for you. Uh, for instance, in Flask, there's a Flask WTF, which is a like forms library that has CSRF protection. Flask itself also contains uh, dependency on It's Dangerous, which is a module that you could you know, roll your own CSRF token. Uh, validation. You know, Pyramid also has some for this, Django also has stuff for this, like, um, and I'm sure whatever web framework you're using and whatever other language also has stuff for this. So anyway, this has been CSRF and hopefully this made sense. And if you guys have additional concepts you guys want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.